Chapter One. My first days at Oxford. The Oxford bus was late. I looked at Dad, and he looked at me. I didn't speak. What could I say? It was good that Jane was there. Phone me when you get to the university, Anna. Dad said. Of course, Dad. Jane smiled, and took my dad's arm. Derek, Anna's going to be okay. She's a big girl now. I know, said Dad. But there are lots of not very nice people out there. Foreigners, most of them. Dad. The bus came after about ten minutes. We all said goodbye, and I got on. I sat down and watched Jane and Dad standing there in the cold, smiling at me. I liked Jane. She and Dad were good friends. They met at work. Of course. That was after Mum left us, but I didn't want to think about that. Five minutes later, the bus left, and with it, I left Jane and Dad and my old home behind me. It was hot on the bus, and I took off my new coat. It was a present from Dad for climbing in Wales. We can go climbing again when you're in Oxford, he said. We wanted to go back to Wales next month. I looked out of the bus window and thought about Oxford. I'm going to be a student at Oxford University, I thought. But. Am I going to like it? My first days at Oxford were exciting. Everything was new. I had a new room to live in. I bought lots of books, and I met lots of new people. There were two girls living with me, Penny, and Magda. Penny was from Manchester, and Magda was from Germany. We were soon good friends. At the end of the first week, there was a dance for the new students. Penny, Magda, and I went to it. The music was good, and I danced with some of the boys there. But they were all very young. Most of the time, Penny, Magda, and I danced together. It's hot in here," said Penny. "Let's go and get a drink." "Yes," said Magda. "I'm thirsty." "Okay," I said. "Leave it to me." There were lots of people at the bar, but I pushed to the front. The young man behind the bar was tall, with dark hair. He's good-looking, I thought. Just then, he looked at me. He had beautiful blue eyes. Then he smiled. What would you like? He asked. He spoke nicely, but he wasn't English. He was a foreigner. Where was he from? Two beers and a coke, please, I said. Two beers and a coke, he said, and he gave me the drinks. That's three pounds forty. He smiled at me. I gave him the money, and I began to take the drinks back to Penny and Magda. 
Can I help you with those? Someone asked. One small young girl with three big drinks to carry. It isn't right. I looked up and saw a young man with a red face next to me at the bar. He looked drunk. I don't like drunk men. I was angry, but I spoke quietly. I can carry my drinks without your help. Thank you very much. You don't understand, the man said. A young man must always help a young woman. My father told me once, Sebastian, my boy. He said. Okay, Sebastian, I said. I'm not interested in your father or in you. Can I get past? I began to walk past him, but he put his hand out to stop me. I pushed his arm away. Coke went all over Sebastian's shirt. You stupid girl! He cried. Look at my beautiful shirt. Sebastian was very angry. He stood in front of me. His right arm went up. Suddenly, I was afraid. He's going to hit me. I thought. Stop that at once! Someone said quietly. It was the man behind the bar. Don't hit that young woman. Are you talking to me? Asked Sebastian. His face was redder than before. Yes, I am. The barman said. And I ask you to be nice to that young woman. Men do not hit women in my country. Your country. And what is your country? I come from Bosnia. The barman said. Ah,、oh, so you're an immigrant, Sebastian said. Well, can I tell you something? We don't want lots of immigrants in our country. Thank you very much. I say, do the police know you're here, or are you an illegal immigrant? The barman didn't say anything. Do you know something? Said Sebastian. I think I'm going to call the police. Just then, a young woman came up to the bar. She took Sebastian's arm. There you are, she said. Come on, Sebastian. Klaus and Maria are waiting for us. They're over there. I say, Sebastian, what did you do to your shirt? The young woman and Sebastian began to walk away. I tell you, Ginny, I'm going to call the police. That barman. Don't be stupid, Sebby. Come along now. Ginny and Sebastian went back to their friends. I looked at the barman. Thanks for your help, I said. That's all right, he said. So was that true? I asked. Are you from Bosnia? Yes, I am. I come from Sarajevo, and my name is Selim. Chapter Two, Selim's story. Selim smiled at me again. Just then, Penny and Magda came to the bar. Have you got the drinks? Penny asked. Yes. Sorry, I said. Someone pushed me, and I lost the coke. Here you are," said Selim, and he gave me a new coke. He quickly put a small paper into my hand too. I put the paper in my bag, 
and gave the coke to Penny. We sat and finished our drinks. Some time later, Magda looked at her watch. I'd like to go now, she said. I'm tired. So we went. When I got home, I took the paper out of my bag and opened it. It had a telephone number on it, and next to it, in big letters, "Phone me, Salim." Next day, I phoned Salim. I wanted to see him again. I wanted to know more about him. I knew something about Bosnia, but I wanted to know more. Why was he in Britain? Was he an illegal immigrant, or not? I was interested in Salim's story, but there was something more. I remembered his blue eyes, and his nice smile. When I thought of Selim, I felt excited. We met one afternoon, and walked along the river. It was a sunny day. We came to a cafe next to the river. We had some coffee, and sat and talked. I asked him about Bosnia. Do your mother and father live in Sarajevo? Selim closed his eyes. My mother and father are dead, he said. They died in the streets of Sarajevo. One day they went to the shops to buy things to eat. There was a bomb in the street, and it killed them. Oh, Selim, I'm sorry, I said. What could I say? I stayed in Bosnia to find work, but there was no work in Sarajevo, and it was dangerous for me there. People wanted to kill me. There was nothing for me in Bosnia. I knew English from school, so I came to Britain. He laughed. <laughs> I gave a friend a lot of money to bring me here. But now, here in Britain, they say, "Go back to Bosnia." But it was dangerous for you to be in Bosnia. You said that. Yes, I tell them this. But then they say, "You are in Britain because you want to work here, not because Bosnia was dangerous." So now I am an illegal immigrant, and I am afraid of the police. But how can you find work here? It's not easy to find work, and the work is not good. When there was work in Bosnia, I worked with computers. Here I work in bars and cafes. I say I am Greek. Greek people can work here, but not Bosnians. So here in Britain, I am Greek. <laughs> Selim laughed again, but it wasn't a happy laugh. We drank our coffee, and looked at the river. Do you miss Bosnia? I asked. Sometimes, I miss the mountains. In Bosnia, every weekend I went to the mountains. I love climbing. But that's wonderful, I said. I love climbing too. My dad and I are climbers. But there are no mountains here, Selim said. Not in Oxford, no. But there are mountains in Wales. That's not very far away. My dad and I are going to climb in Wales next month. Then I thought of something. Selim. Listen," I said. "There's a climbing wall in the university. It's good fun. Let's go and climb there next week." 
So next week, we met at the university climbing wall. Selim looked up at it. This is new to me, he said. We don't have climbing walls in Bosnia. It's easy, I said. Watch me. I climbed one of the easy routes up the wall. Selim watched me. Then he did it. He was good. I could see that. He moved easily up the wall. When he came down, he smiled. <laughs> I liked that, he said. You're right. It was fun, but it was very easy. Let's try a different route. So we tried a different, longer route. This time, we had ropes. I went first. Selim came after me. I'm a good climber, but Selim was better than me. When we finished, Selim said, <sighs> "That was good. Can we do it again? Perhaps next week." I looked at him and smiled happily. I'd like that, I said. Chapter three, about my father. My dad phoned that evening. How are you? He asked. How is it going? Good, Dad. I said. I'm having a wonderful time here. Don't forget our visit to Wales. No, Dad. Of course not. You know. I went to the university climbing wall today, and it was good fun. We had a nice time. Did you go with one of your friends? Well, yes, I did. Look, Dad, I must go now. Penny's here, and she's waiting for me to finish. We're going to make dinner tonight. We can speak again next week. Goodbye now. Of course, Penny wasn't there. But I couldn't tell Dad about Selim. Why not? Well, for you to understand, I think I need to tell you something about my father. His name is Derek. Derek Palmer. He works in a factory. It's a Swedish factory, and it makes mobile phones, Lundberg phones. Perhaps you know the name. It's a big factory, and lots of people work there. Dad is a manager in the factory. In fact, he's the sales manager. He's a good worker, but last year sales weren't very good. He told me about it one day. You see, he said, in Britain, more than seventy percent of the people have mobile phones. So now we're selling to only thirty percent of the people. What are we going to do when everyone has a mobile phone? So Dad was worried about his work, but that wasn't the only thing. Lundberg is a big company. It has some British managers, and some Swedish managers. One of the Swedish managers was called Lars. He and Dad became friends, good friends. They often went out for drinks together. Then, Lars began to come round to our house for dinner. Mum, Dad, and Lars did lots of things together. Mum, Jill is her name, wasn't interested in climbing. She liked going to the cinema. 
Lars liked that too. So Mum and Lars began to go to the cinema together. They usually went to the cinema at weekends. Most weekends, Dad and I went climbing. I can never forget one weekend. That weekend, when everything went wrong. Dad and I came back on Sunday night as usual. It was late, and the house was dark. Mum wasn't there. I looked downstairs. Dad went upstairs to look for her. I felt worried. Where was she? Perhaps she went for a drink with Lars. I thought. Then, I heard a cry from upstairs. Oh. I went up and opened the door of Mum and Dad's room. Dad was there, on the bed, with his back to me. I went to him. When he looked up at me, his eyes were red. He had a letter in his hand. What's wrong, Dad? What is it? He said nothing, but gave me the letter. I didn't want to read it. She left with Lars. Dad said. I love him, she says. Did you know anything about this, Anna? No, Dad. Of course not. What am I going to do without her? I felt afraid. I walked over to Dad, and hugged him. We cried a lot that night. Mum didn't come back. Lars got a job in Sweden, and Mum went with him. Dad was very quiet about it all at first. Then he began to get angry. He was angry with Mum, but he was angrier with Lars. Lars was his friend. He thought, "How could a friend do that to you?" Then he found an answer to that question. It was because Lars was a foreigner. He said. British people didn't do that to their friends. Only foreigners did that. Of course, that isn't true. British people aren't different from people from other countries. I told Dad that again and again, but I couldn't make him think differently. After Mum left, he hated foreigners. And he hated immigrants most of all. They come here, and they take our jobs, he said. Then they take our women too. I'd like them all to go back home. Maybe Dad's going to change now he's got Jane. She came to work at Lundberg a month after Mum left us. I think Jane's good for Dad. She's very different from Mum, but that's okay with me. I can talk to Jane, but I can't talk to Dad, and I didn't want to tell him about Selim. Chapter Four: My Climbing Weekend. I saw a lot of Selim in the next month or two. I liked him a lot. He was good-looking, but he had more than good looks. Selim was kind. His English wasn't always right, but he was easy to be with, and easy to talk to. 
But one day when we met, he was angry. He had a letter with him. Look at this, he said. I must go. I must leave England. Now I must go back to Bosnia. But why? What happened? Someone told them about me. They saw me working in a cafe. He is not Greek, they said. He is an illegal immigrant. He turned to me. Why do they hate me? He asked. I don't understand. I don't want to take money from this country. I don't want something for nothing. I only want to live here and work. I am a man. I feel things. I have a heart. Why are British people afraid of me? I don't know. I said, some British people don't like foreigners. You're different from them, and they don't like different people. Don't think about them, Salim. Think about me. I like you. I kissed him, but he didn't kiss me back. He was very angry. Some days later, Selim was angry again when I told him about my climbing weekend with Dad. Please stay with me this weekend, he said. I'm sorry, Selim, but my father and I planned this visit to Wales a long time ago. <laughs> you are lucky to have a father, Selim said. Now he was sad. My father is dead. He died with my mother five years ago this week. It was on October the twenty-sixth, the Saturday. Oh, Salim, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I'd like to be with you then, but I must go with my father. Can't you understand that? So you're going to leave me here. Selim said. I didn't say a thing. And Selim sat and watched me, sad and angry, and said nothing. In the end, we said goodbye, and I didn't see him again that week. Dad came to get me from university on Friday afternoon. And we drove to Wales. He was happy, and excited. Dad was always happy when he went climbing. In the car, we talked about our weekend. I want to climb Triffin, he said. I didn't speak. Triffin isn't a very big mountain, but it isn't easy to climb. Dad looked at me. We can do it, Anna," he said. "I don't know. Let's see, Dad," I answered. Early next morning, it was warm, and the sun was hot. But soon the sun went in, and the sky got darker and darker. As we walked across country up to Triffin, it began to rain. There are some dangerous rocks on Triffin, and now they were wet. Dad went first. His feet slipped on the wet rock, and he stopped. Now I went up past him. I could see the route up the mountain. But it wasn't going to be easy. Then I looked back down. Dad had the rope in his hands, but he was tired. Could he climb up? I didn't think he could. 
I called down to him. I can't do it, Dad. I'm going to come down. <sighs> Dad and I sat there under the rocks. We ate our sandwiches and drank our coffee. The rain was worse than before. Let's climb Triffin another day, Dad. I said. Okay, we can come back here again. Perhaps at Easter when the weather's better. What do you think? Yes, let's come back at Easter. I said. We talked some more. Dad was happy, happier than usual. I thought. Perhaps it was a good time to tell him about Salim. Dad, I began. Yes, Anna. There's a boy at the university. No, that wasn't right. I began again. Dad, I've got a friend at the university. I said. A boy. A boyfriend. Well, I must say that was quick. Dad said, and he smiled. Tell me about him. Well, he's got dark hair and blue eyes. Dad laughed. <laughs> yes, yes, that's all very interesting. But tell me, is he a nice boy? Yes, Dad. He's nice and kind. Oh, and he's a climber too. He's a good climber. We went to the university climbing wall last week. That's good. That's good. Well, maybe we can climb together. What's his name? Sam, I said. His name's Sam. Well, what could I say? Selim isn't an English name after all. And you know about my dad and foreigners. Chapter Five, Home for Christmas. In the next weeks, I forgot about Selim, about Dad, and about climbing. I stayed in my room, and I worked hard. I had exams in December, and I was worried about them. I wanted to do well. Then one day, Selim came to see me. He was very worried. They sent me a new letter, he said. Now I must leave Britain in two months. I can't go back to Bosnia. What can I do? Selim, I said. There's an organization in Oxford called Immigrant Aid. They help people like you. Magda told me about it. She gave me their phone number. Would you like it? Can they help me? Yes, of course they can, Selim. We don't all hate immigrants in Britain. Don't you? Look, Selim, I don't want to argue with you. I said. Here's the phone number. Give them a call. My exams were not easy, but I answered most of the questions, so I was happy. But I was very tired. I went home for Christmas. Dad wasn't there to meet me at the bus station, but Jane met me. We hugged. Why isn't Dad here? Is something wrong? It's the factory, Anna. They're going to close it. Lundberg are going to make all their phones in Sweden now. Your father is very angry. It's those foreigners again, he says. He always says that. It's rubbish. 
Don't be angry with your father, Anna. Try to be nice to him. He loves you. Things aren't easy for him now. I know that, Jane. But. <laughs> And then I began to cry, and I couldn't stop. <laughs> What's the matter, Anna? You can tell me. And I told her about Selim. It was easy to tell Jane. It's okay, Anna, she said. I understand, but I don't know about your father. Don't say anything to him at the moment," she went on. "It's not a good time. He's very worried about his job. Can't we do something about the factory?" I asked. "Can't we stop it closing? Can't we make Lundberg change their plans?" I said that to your dad, but he didn't listen. "There's nothing we can do," he told me. But I think we can do something about it, and I'm going to try," said Jane. Well, I tried to be nice to Dad. The first day or two, he was fine, but on Christmas Day we argued. He began to talk about the factory again. It's these immigrants," he said. They come here and they take our jobs, and then British people can't find work. Dad, that's rubbish. We need immigrants to work here. They work hard. They do the dirty jobs. You know, I like immigrants. I think they bring colour and new life to this country. Oh, you like immigrants, do you? Perhaps you've got some immigrant friends in Oxford, Derek," said Jane. "Yes, I have," I went on angrily. "I told you about my boyfriend. Do you remember, Dad? Well, his name isn't Sam; it's Selim, and he's from Bosnia. Yes, Dad, my boyfriend's an immigrant, and I love him." How do you like that? Dad's face went white. He left the room quickly. Jane followed him. That evening, I had a call from Selim. Happy Christmas, Anna," he said to me. "Oh, Selim." I'm having a terrible Christmas," I said. My dad and I argued. What did you argue about? He asked. Oh, nothing important," I said. But what about you? Did you have a good Christmas? Very good, Anna," he said. I'm very happy. They're going to let me stay here for three more months. Immigrant aid are going to help me. They told me about it on Monday. I tried to phone and tell you before. Selim, that's wonderful. I'm very happy for you. Anna, I love you. I love you too, Selim, and I want to be with you now. I left home two days later, and went back to Oxford. I soon found a room in a house for Selim and me to rent. We were lucky. Some friends of Magda's left Oxford at New Year, and we moved into their room. We were very happy there. Every day, I went off to the university, and he went off to his job at the cafe. We didn't have much money, but that was okay. We were in love. I phoned home to tell Dad about it, but he was never there when I phoned. Perhaps he didn't want to speak to me. But I told Jane about Selim and me, 
and she was happy for us. Chapter six. In love. I didn't hear from Dad for weeks. Then one Friday, Jane phoned, and she and I talked. The next morning, Dad and Jane came to see us in Oxford. Salim opened the door to them. Dad wasn't very happy to see Salim, but Jane smiled at him, and kissed me. I asked them in, and we all sat down. I made some coffee, and then we talked. Jane spoke first. We have something wonderful to tell you. It's about the Lundberg factory. It's not going to close now, after all. Thanks to you, love. My father said. Tell them about it, Jane. Well, said Jane, I have a friend in the head office of Hayashi, the Japanese phone company. She told me that Hayashi want to open a new factory in Europe, so I told her about the Lundberg factory. They're buying the factory next month, and all the workers can stay. That's wonderful, I said. Isn't it, Salim? There's something more, Jane said. Derek wants to say something to Salim. Go on, Derek. Yes, said Dad. He spoke very quickly. Look, Salim, I said some stupid things about foreigners and immigrants. I'm sorry, but now I want us to be friends. Yes, said Salim. You love Anna, and I love her too. It's good for us to be friends. <laughs> Salim got up and hugged Dad. At first, Dad's face went red, but then he smiled and hugged Salim back. Don't kiss him, Salim, <laughs> I said. Jane laughed. <laughs> right, said Dad. Salim, I'd like you to come with Anna and me to Wales at Easter. And me, said Jane. I'm coming too. Remember. Sorry, I forgot," said Dad. "That's right, we're all going to Wales. Are we going to climb Triffin?" Salim asked. "Yes, we are," I said, before my father could speak. "Good," said Dad, and he smiled at Salim. The weather at Easter was good. The sun was in the sky, but it wasn't very hot. There was some wind, but not very much. Jane drove us along the road to the foot of the mountains, and we got out. We looked up at the mountains. Triffin was beautiful in the sun. We were all excited. Look," said Salim. I think Triffin is a big animal. Now it is dead or sleeping, but perhaps one day it's going to come alive again. It's a good day for climbing, Dad said. We said goodbye to Jane. She was going shopping in the next town. See you about five o'clock, she said. Don't be late. Have a wonderful day, and be careful, Derek. We began to walk up to Triffin. I could see the rock wall over our heads. I knew it was dangerous, but today the rock wasn't wet. It's going to be okay, I thought. And everything went well at first. We got the ropes out of our bags.
so Liam and I put helmets on. But Dad didn't. I don't need a helmet, he said. I'll be okay without one. The sun went in. The wind was stronger now. Dad went first, then me, then Selim. Slowly, we climbed up the big wall of rock. Dad was near the top. We're nearly there, he called down to us. Just then, there was a big gust of wind. I looked up, and suddenly a rock fell down from the top of the mountain. Dad! I called. But Dad didn't hear me. The rock hit him on the head. <coughs> He fell. The rope went tight, and I began to fall too. <coughs> There was nothing under me. I fell down, down, and then the rope went tight again, and I stopped. I heard Selim's voice from far away. You're okay, Anna. He called to me. I've got the rope. There's a big rock in front of you. Can you see it? Swing on the rope and catch it. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. I swung at the rock wall. Once, and once again. Uh, oh. The third time, I caught the big rock with my right hand. Good. Now climb down the wall of rock. It's easy. You can do it. I climbed slowly down the rock wall. I could see Dad now. His eyes were closed, and he didn't move. Was he alive or dead? Selim climbed down to me. It's all right, he said. I can get to your father. Selim climbed down the rock to Dad. He looked at him carefully for a minute or two. Then he looked up. Smiled, and called up to me. He's alive! Oh. <sighs> I cried, but I was very happy. Selim brought Dad back up to me. I found Dad's mobile phone, and called the mountain rescue people. Then. Selim put Dad on his back, and we began to go down the mountain. I thought it all went on for hours, but it was only half an hour. I was tired, and my arm felt bad. We moved very slowly. In the end, we heard a helicopter above us. The mountain rescue people. Just then, we heard a cry. It was Jane. She ran towards us. Is it Derek? She cried. Is he all right? He's going to be okay now, the mountain rescue man said. We're taking him to hospital. Go with him, Jane, I said. He needs you. Jane didn't say anything, but she hugged me. Then the mountain rescue people took her into the helicopter with Dad. They went off to the hospital. Selim and I watched the helicopter. Then Selim spoke. Jane and your father, they are in love, yes? Yes, they are in love, I said.
I'm happy for them. What about us? I thought. Are we in love too? I didn't know about us. I've got something for you, Selim said. I'd like to give it to you now. It's a good time, I think. He brought out a small green box, and gave it to me. Open it, he said. Oh! In the box, there was a beautiful ring. It's from Bosnia, Selim said. It was my mother's ring. My father gave it to her many years ago, before they were married. Now they are dead. Today, I give it to you with love, Anna. It comes from me, from the heart. I took the ring, and put it on the third finger of my left hand. Oh, Selim, it's beautiful, I said. Thank you. I kissed him, and took his hand. Let's go back down now, I said. <laughs>